So I would now like to introduce the next speaker, who I think has me beat, having been programming for more than 30 years, which I don't see how that's even possible. Uh, <laughs> starting in kindergarten. Wow, I, you definitely have me beat on that one. So please give a very warm welcome and round of applause to Tally Brack. <laughs> First testing award ceremony brought to you. Welcome to the first testing award ceremony brought to you live from the Lyrath Estate in Kilkenny. It is a great honor to have you all with us. The nominees for the best testing tool for Node.js are Mocha, Love Actually, Jest, The Social Network, Node Test, Home Alone, V-Test, Speed, Playwright, Inception. And the winner is... No, actually we're not going to do that. Um, instead, we will go through some of the differences between the testing frameworks and we will cover some of the change. It's not going to be as thorough every single feature of the uh, test. Um, my name is Tali Barak. As you heard, I work for a company called Ubic. This, is, uh, this talk is named Great Expectations, a bit of literature reference and pun intended. And let's start talking about testing in general and a bit about the history of uh, testing. So we have testing or software validation since we have the modern software, which is about 80 years now. And in, at the beginning of this century or millennium, the concept of writing, automating our test, until then it was manual, but then they go, oh, wait, there is something here that know how to do manual repetitive work very well. It's called computer, so why not automate our test? And back in the 90s and then 2000, we started with the discipline of um, testing at first as uh, overall testing, but then more into agile. And I need the clicker. Is it not working? And the way to do that is if we had a function like this one, okay, a very simple one, obviously, then you would go and write another function that would anticipate some sort of result from this function and will just log whether it's a, a right one or a wrong one. And since we are developers, we don't like a lot of boilerplate, right? So what do we do when we don't like a, a lot of boilerplate? We write a framework. So um, we would start with something, so instead of writing all this boiler code, we would have something like test, addition, we would put the result and the framework would know to say whether it's working or not. And if we look specifically into the JavaScript world, so we know the JavaScript started in 1995, 10 days in May as we know them, and it was not until 2008, basically, because of JavaScript and also because of introducing this automation of test uh, discipline, um, that QUnit was um, introduced as a testing framework. It was obviously a testing framework for the UI, for the browser, because in 2008, JavaScript ran in the browser. In 2009, we have the reason we are all here. Node.js was introduced. And in 2010, Jasmine, another framework still focusing on the browser was introduced and sort of like set the, the standard for what JavaScript testing framework is like. Moving forward, 2011, 2000, until sort of 2012, 13, was, you can call it the, 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 uh, uh, the, the good era of Node.js and a lot of Smart people were actually promoting and working on it. And especially I can talk about these three people. They all have something in common. They have last names that I cannot pronounce. 
Um, so Isaac, as, you, as most of you probably know, is the creator of NPM. He created a testing library that is called NodeTap. Uh, TJ, the creator of Express, he also created a, a, a testing framework called Mocha. And Sindre, the maintainer of like 1,000, uh, over 1,000 packages on uh, uh, NPM, he created Ava. So just a quick check, who's using NoTap? Ooh, who's using Ava? Okay, who's using Mocha? Okay, so I have to say that I've seen it differently. Uh, th this, is not, uh, this is not a real number, but uh, um, still, Mocha has gained a lot more popularity than the other two, so I will mention it here. Um, and then, in 2015, a small company called Facebook then, Meta now, open source their testing uh, framework that is called Jest, and Jest did something a bit different. Mocha was actually a test runner or a test harness as we call it and did nothing else. And it was assumed that everything else will be done by different libraries. So we had sign-on as a mocking library, we had chai for uh, assertions. Just introduced everything, including the kitchen thing, in one package, which means you, if you go for just, you don't need to go and uh, pick a, a separate, a, um, separate packages for, for other functionalities. And this approach turns out that actually gained some uh, um, popularity, and around 2019, Jest became very popular. Those numbers are slightly misleading because Jest was also, if you compare that to Mocha, because Jest was heavily also used at, for the front-end testing. And in fact, this is another thing that people really liked about it, the fact that you have one framework that is doing both. It's doing the, the front-end and the back-end. Onward. Um, 2021. Um, uh, the, the creator of Vue has introduced a, a library that is called Vtest, um, which follow just but try to um, fix some of the things that, that um, um, uh, just didn't do very well, and it also worked very well with Vit, which is, which is a, a runner, also front-end and back-end. Um, 2022. Node is coming out of age, it's uh, celebrating 13th birthday, and what would you give a runtime framework for a 13th birthday? A testing library would be a good answer. So Node test was introduced in uh, um, uh, 16 or 18. Um, yeah. And about the same time, which is basically last, uh, uh, not last year, but two years ago mostly, um, the team at Microsoft has introduced Playwright, and I know that some of you go and think like, uh, what does it have to do with browser automation? You talked about no testing framework. Well, Playwright started as a, a, as a browser automation, but then it got its own testing library, which is really good. I'm a bit biased, I have to say, but it's, a, it's an amazing uh, testing library, especially if you're writing integration tests. So our first comparison here is what do we do in installation? And this is, this is not a benchmark, please, okay? This was done on my machine, uh, a lot of uh, uh, interference. But basically you can see here that if you install Jest, you're getting a lot of things. If you do Mocha client sign-on as well, the, the clear winner here is obviously no test because it's just there with a... a with Node, so you don't need to install anything and it takes zero seconds. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is syntax and hooks. So usually this is the kind of style that you are going to use. You're going to use some sort of a test and then write in the callback the testing function and then you can uh, uh, have more and more tests. Um, there is also what is called a BDD style, and I have a warning, this is not a BDD style, but the name has cat. 
So instead of using test and t, you might use describe and it to, add, uh, uh, to uh, define the test. And we all know, and all the testing framework have something similar for the before all and the before each and after each and after all, and uh, you can use them in all the tests. The one thing I want to mention which is different, and, uh, it, um, and this is something you should look into. Also, uh, NodeTap had something similar. It's called fixtures. And this allows you to, ha to have some sort of declarative way of using uh, hooks before and after hooks, before and after the test. So for example, here, if I have the Axios, it will, behind the scenes, I have the fixture that will uh, uh, spin, up, uh, spin up the, the Axios and maybe insert some data or whatever, and I don't need to write that as a before, and, uh, before each and after each. It's a, a beautiful mechanism. I could talk about it for like, um, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 20 hours. So if you want, catch me later. Um, so basically all of them has the BDD style, the hooks, uh, Playwright has the fixtures. I just want to note that uh, these comparison tables, please take them with a grain of salt. Uh, sometimes there are a lot of nuances that might uh, uh, diff that might uh, impact it and also things change very rapidly so it's uh, just a, a sort of a reference. Okay, we installed, we know how to write the test, let's move on, let's try and execute the test. And the first thing we want to do is to load our test. And we have some uh, 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 foot test JS and then all of our uh, uh, frameworks allow us to define, to run with a CLI or run with a, some sort of a JSON or, an, a, a, or a JavaScript object that has all the definition, whether do we want the test file, do we want the spec file. And once we do that, um, it will go through all the files that we defined in our test and it will start executing them. This is what most testing frameworks will do. It will uh, uh, import all the files that we want to get out of it. It will, um, um, and then it will find the describe or the higher level um, and start mapping, building a map of the, uh, of the test. And when it comes to the it, it will actually not run the callback. Instead, it will just say, I have a test here. And the result will be something like this tree. Okay, so we have all our describes, all our tests, even if they are nested, and then it will start and execute it. And the good thing about that is that we actually get a map of all our files, our uh, uh, production files, and our test file. And this is why this is useful, because you can actually know when you change a, a specific file, what test needs to be executed. So here, if I change the file that is marked with the, with the arrow, it, it says, and through all this graph of dependencies, it will say, okay, this is what you need to run. This is the test that need to actually run because they might have been impacted. And this is something great, of course, to put in your uh, commit, uh, commit hook if you want to run specific tests. Um, Jest and Vtest take this one step further because they have defined related tests. So instead of specifying which files to run, you can say, run me the tests that are related to this uh, specific file. Again, useful for the, for the commit hook. Now test is doing something that is slightly different. It just immediately run. It, 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 it sees the file of the test or the multiple file of the test and it will just start executing all the tests because it's sort of like working like node. Um, this is the reason if you're familiar with the dash dash test only that you need to run, this is the reason for it because it doesn't know that it should wait for specific, it needs to be told in advance, I need to wait for this specific file. Okay, Jest is doing something even, uh, well, different. It's even doing a static analysis of the file and, try and identify what is, be what is impacting what. Um, uh, this is one of the reasons, 
anyone that worked with Jest knows that it's pretty slow. This is one of the reasons. Okay, so build time, immediate static analysis. Execution order. Um, usually this is how we execute the test. We run a file, run all the file one by one and so on. And the problem with that is that it's pretty slow. Um, most frameworks have some way to speed it up and there is a, a, some confusion in the terminology. So I'll use the terminology here as standard. The first one, of course, is parallel. Parallel means uh, use all of my cores, course, uh, CPU cores, to run multiple files uh, uh, in parallel. Um, usually the, the default for most test runner, it will take the number of cores that you have minus one, and this will be the number of parallel runs, but you can actually um, uh, configure it like uh, this one here. Um, and parallel run is basically working this way, okay? So you have one, one file once it's finished, um, uh, you get the next file to run and so on until uh, everything runs and it, uh, it exhausted the list of tests to run. Um, the, the issue, uh, one thing about that is that if I have this test, like the one that you see here, you see I have, uh, I made very short test, but then a very long one. And you see here that the long one is actually running last and making all of my tests take uh, uh, like five here, okay, it's very long. So one way of optimizing it, and um, um, Jest is doing that, Playwright is doing that, is to run the slowest test first. It keeps some information about the execution time, and then when I run the slowest first, it will work like this. The this is the slow one, and then the other calls will take care, and then you can see it's the same number of tests, but I optimize it to go to work, to, to take an overall time of three. Another thing that we have for optimizing is uh, sharding. Parallel run is excellent when you have strong machines, like the machines that you like the ones that you're working on. But if you're running the test on CI, and I hope you're running the test on CI, um, it, usually the CI has a much weaker machines, usually like two CPUs, so running two minus one is not really effective. Um, and run, running with a number, number higher of uh, processes will just make it even slower. So the way to do that is actually to shard it to different machines. And it means that I cannot just take the next file every time that I finish because it's different uh, machines, uh, they do not communicate. And um, so I need to tell in advance which files need to run. So um, just, uh, just Vtest and Playwright has it. Um, it was added in no test, and uh, I'll take a bit of credit because it was added right after, uh, after my talk on OTNV exactly about this. They, they decided to add the uh, sharding. So it's just this one, but instead of having file by, uh, one by uh, running each file at a time, it will just go like that. Okay, also we have concurrent, I have to rush. We have a, a concurrency as well. Um, concurrency is very useful because we're working with Node and with async code, so we just take advantage of that, and every time it's waiting for some I.O. or whatever, it will just run another test. So this is the concurrency. And also we have random and shuffle. Uh, this is uh, randomizing files, uh, randomizing inside a specific uh, a test, and it's Extremely useful, not so much for performance and speed, but to make sure that your tests are isolated and are standalone and don't just happen to, to crawl a bug. Uh, okay, so this, this was the randomized. Uh, here, again, a summary of uh, uh, what kind of uh, features the, the different frameworks have. Quick one on TypeScript and ESM. Um, Gil will talk about it, we were already discussed, but uh, when we look at the world of, uh, 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 not, not, na not pure JavaScript, I would say, we have the native ESM that was introduced in Node, we have the ESM, the fake ESM, or the ESM-like, which is meaning we will use uh, a, a transpiler, namely Babel, to 
uh, convert our, uh, our code from, uh, uh, e from ESM-like to um, uh, CommonJS. And we have TypeScript. There are currently like three main, thi main ways to, um, to transpile TypeScript. We have Babel that tra uh, transpile it. We have the core TypeScript compiler, the TSC. And we also have the SWC, which is almost compliant with TSC, but a lot faster. Um, here we will see that um, um, the yellow marks, the yellow tick marks actually mean that it supports natively. The, um, the orange one is actually means that you can do something to do it, like using a, a specific loader, like running it with TS node, for example, for TypeScript and so on. Most of them cover. Um, Playwright doesn't know to work with a, with a fake ESM, and uh, uh, just native ESM is still somehow uh, uh, confusing. OK, next thing we have the mocking. Um, so um, mocking uh, is done in, in Mocha. We use a sign-on for most of it. And uh, um, a lot of, there are a lot of similarity, but there, are lots of, uh, but there are a few differences that I would like to point out. The first one is the global mocks. Uh, and this is something that Jest is providing. Uh, that you can actually, let's say you have some libraries that you don't want to start mocking on every test. You can define that as a global mock, put it under the uh, um, uh, dash dash mocks dash dash folder, and in the same structure as it is, for example, in your node modules, and just will know automatically to use this mock for all the tests. You don't need to mock them on a uh, test by test. It's not a really good practice, but there might be cases when you will need something like that. Another thing is hoisting. Um, when you run the test, the first thing that will happen is the, uh, all the imports. But there are cases when you want to run some code just before the import, like, for example, to fake the date or so on. So Vtest has a really nice feature that is called a, a hoisted, and this will actually be called before the, the tests uh, test start to run. Um, another nice thing coming from Jest and Vitesse is require actual. You sometimes want, you have a library the, and uh, uh, you want to mock a single function in this library. So you can just import it and say um, Jest require actual my module, meaning take everything, don't mock all the uh, modules and just override, let's say, this function and, uh, um, and this one will be a mock or you can have multiple. OK, um, timers mock, uh, we also have that. Um, uh, this is uh, uh, coming from Sinon, and basically um, Vtest and Jest are using Sinon to do the timers mock. It's, it allows you to specify a certain date, advance set timeout, and so on. Um, and Node also, this is also brand new introduced timers mock in it. So it's really good news. Um, a third, uh, uh, we have two, two main styles, the one that is, uh, uh, the, that is called assert, the other one is the expect. Uh, I prefer the expect, I don't know who else like that. Um, but uh, also, uh, Jest and Vitesse has really advanced functionality about comparing parts of objects, parts of uh, array, and so on, containing expect.any, for example, for a, a specific. The good thing is, by the way, that Jest expect is, a, is, a, is now uh, is part of Jest, but is also standalone. So if you need advanced expectations, you can actually use the Jest expect. Uh, and also, it, it uh, so expect any number and, and that sort of thing. And also, it introduced the short, the snapshot. It was already mentioned. Instead of just specifying the data that you want to see, you can actually ask it to, to snapshot. And if the test fail, you can automatically update it, update it, and uh, you will miss the error. So Mocha has the assert, expect, snapshot, just v test, playwright, and so on. Ah, I have one minute. Okay, um, coverage. Um, 
Uh, sorry, the, the, the next topic is reporting. The, there's a lot to say here. The, there are different styles. Most of them support human uh, uh, machine readable format that you need, like, uh, things like TAP and human readable. I want to point out one thing about coverage. Um, that in, in, the, in the JavaScript world, there are two main ways to do coverage. One is the Istanbul and NYC, and the other is the V8 C8, which is, uh, um, uh, well, uh, the Istanbul and NYC, what you need to do first is instrument your code. Okay, so it will go through the code and add a lot of a, a counter inside the code like, like uh, the ones here. So every time anything will run, will, uh, um, will, uh, it will automatically, the, the counter will increase. V8 and C8, it's built in inside the engine. Okay, so the V8 engine know how to do that and every time it, it, it executes, you know, so you don't need to instrument the code. Then the next thing you do, you will have a global, vi global variable called coverage. This is true for both. Both of them will produce it. And um, uh, the next thing, you will have uh, uh, some sort of data, all the data that is being collected. And from this data, we generate a nice report with all the greens that we love so much. Um, the important thing here that I would like to note is that they are not compliant, okay? So if you're using Istanbul or if you, and you're using V8, don't merge the files. It, you will get wrong errors. And there's also a fantastic guest issue talking about the differences because they are, they are, they are not equal. They are not uh, actually the same. So you can uh, uh, see that. Um, so Mocha uh, doesn't really have anything. You wrap it with NYC and so on. Jest uh, uh, and Vtest has the option to choose. Node test has uh, uh, the C8 V8 coverage, and Playwright barely have this. OK, so I'm running out of time. What do you think? Do we have a winner after all this uh, 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 comparison? Anyone think we have a winner? Yes, we do. You are all the winners. Take, uh, take uh, all this innovation, use it, and write tests. I should have that slide. Thank you so much. Um, this is my uh, contact, and I will be around if anyone wants to chat. We don't have time for questions and so. Thank you. Excellent. <clears throat> Big round of applause, please. Love that. And I think we have a couple of hints today. Two talks on test frameworks. So I think some hints for everybody in the audience. Got to write a lot of tests. Thank you so much for that talk.